Thank you very much to viewer Niels. Uh, Niels4377, here's the question. I'll read it out to you. Uh, thank you very much for questions. Anytime user subscribers ask questions, I do my best to answer them. Thank you very much. That always helps my channel because I might not think of things that you're thinking of and ask me a question, I will do my best to answer it. Niels asks, I learned a lot from your videos. How do you manage moisture in your sleeping system? Some people do caper barrier or synthetic quilt on top. Do you try to dry your sleep system during the day sometimes? I, used hot, I saw you using hot Nalgene bottles. So let me set up and I will discuss my different methods for drying my sleep system. As soon as I get up in the morning and I motivate myself to get on my sleeping bag, especially on an expedition, the moment I get out of the sleeping bag and I can, I get my gear going, is what I immediately do is get my sleeping bag completely unzipped. And I unzip this bad boy. Not, well, okay, not completely, completely. I don't want to unlock it because it's annoying to get the double zipper. But I turn this bad boy inside out. And then what I do is the outside of the fabric, which is usually moist, I literally sit here as a bonus of keeping myself warm as I eat my cold cereal. Yes, I do eat cold cereal at minus 40 degrees. It is great and highly efficient. But what I do is there's a twofold reason for this. One, I've usually got multiple jackets on, so I'm trying to keep myself warm. But in the morning, I'm extra cold. I'm a little bit lethargic. So I put the, my sleeping bag over me as a warming element, and that way I can keep myself warm. But the big bonus, number two, is my body is worth about a 100 watt incandescent light bulb. I don't know how many watts that would be in LED bulbs, but in a 100 watt light bulb, I actually generate quite a bit of heat. So if I sit here in the morning and I'm in my tent for, you know, probably an hour eating, prepping, brushing, doing whatever, I keep my sleeping bag on me as much as I can for the warmth and for the drying. So that definitely helps drive some of the moisture out of my sleeping bag. Now, some people would argue that for the moisture transport system to work or your inside of your sleeping bag, the moisture ideally drives outward. So it goes from the inside to the out. And that way, if I was putting the sleeping bag kind of over me inside out, I would be driving moisture up but I've found just experimenting over months and months of my life out in the cold outdoors that if I get enough heat just on the outside layer, it, it won't really drive the moisture through. It'll just kind of help it evaporate, especially in the hyper dry polar climates of Greenland and Antarctica and Denali. Now, as soon as I get to my tent and I get my, well, get to my tent, get to my campsite, set up my tent in the evening, again, I unzip my sleeping bag and I usually just leave the foot box normal position and I unzip this guy and not too much, but anytime I've got a little bit of extra heat, I get my sleeping bag out and just get this all fluffed up because what happens is when you've got your sleeping bag crunched in a down compress or a compressible bag and you leave that till nine o'clock or half an hour before you go to sleep, that moisture in the down has had time to sit there and freeze. So, if, excuse me, if you unzip this thing and have this at the last second and get in, you're gonna freeze your keister off, which you don't want. So as soon as you can, get your bag, open it up, and sometimes I'll unzip it if it's real moist, maybe I'll put it on me, but a lot of times I'll just un, or unstuff it. Sorry, I didn't mean to say unzip, unstuff it, put it in a corner and just let it fluff up because of the moisture content, it takes a long time for a down bag to fluff up and I just give it a little shake. Now, my expedition partner, Terry Williams, was concerned about that on our Greenland expedition. We talk about that in our book, Two Friends and a Polar Bear, is he was worried about the sleeping bag getting damaged in the evening, so he would leave it compressed or totally squashed down. And I was able to convince him that, look, I mean, we, we've got plenty of safe space, haha, -ha, safe space, I know in the tent where the sleeping bag isn't going to be damaged. Maybe you just fold it up and just use its mass and just put it in a corner and that is more than adequate to do that. So in the evening, a lot of times if there's a little bit of sun, the bag will actually warm up. Now, you were talking about, uh, Niels, is drying the sleeping bag out in the day. Now, if you're backpacking, traveling, or sledding or something, putting your sleeping bag out, 
for the likelihood of the warmth in the day is going to be pretty risky because the microfiber on this would be pretty easy to damage. The Gore Windstop in my bag, well, it's buried behind me here, but my Gore Windstop bag is a lot tougher. But me personally, I would not risk my sleeping bag outside of my backpack or my sleds like these traveling because if anything fell over and snagged and tore a huge hole in my bag, I would have a much greater problem than moisture in my bag. Now, to consider that by using your body as a heat source, maybe you're in your tent in the evening too, and it's extra chilly, again, just literally put this bad boy over you, drape it over, and the heat from your body will begin pushing moisture out of the bag. Now there's a third fold reason that is a secret. Hopefully you're watching the video up to this point, otherwise you missed the secret, is that when you're camping in super cold conditions, the colder you are, the more calories you're going to burn to stay warm. That's just true fact. I mean, I, I literally lived off 70 pounds of butter for three plus months. So anytime I could sit, I would have my bison bag literally over me with my jackets, my parka, my, I mean, everything I literally had, and I would have my sleeping bag over me and I'd still be shivering because it was just that cold, like minus 55, it was minus 60, I don't know what it was at that moment, but freaking freezing. So what I literally do is if it is ultra, ultra cold in the evening and I get food set up and I'm just sitting there working my way through the food, is again, I will get my sleeping bag cover myself up, especially if there's no sun or clouds completely in or it's dark, like in Yellowstone at minus 45, whoo! And again, just bundle it up and the heat from my body will cause those little molecules of water just to pop out and it will dry my bag. The toughest part about keeping the bag dry is the part by your mouth. Others, uh, other YouTubers have suggested putting a fleece barrier over this. That's actually a really slick suggestion. My challenge in that is if I'm sleeping on my side and thrashing around, that's going to flop over. So if I don't put some sort of Velcro on there, it's a problem. So definitely some challenges, but do everything you can to keep your bag as dry as possible. Super important. Uh, at the end of my Greenland expedition, there was still some moisture in there. Uh, no matter what I did, and that's just how it worked out. So thank you very much for subscribing. Please, again, leave questions at the comment section. I will do my best to answer them and help you folks out. Please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel.